for sure. Dude, your car has so much character to it. I love it. How long did it take you to build it to that point? Four years. Wow. It's uh, the course of four years, watching a lot of videos, pictures uh, of other cars. You know, the Z4s are not big. You know, the population in the United States is very low, you know, so they're very big in Asia. Oh, okay. Uh, in Japan and Taiwan, that's where they have a lot of the cars modified, so. You've done a great job with it, that's for sure. It's such an interesting build because you never see them. <laughs> when I first saw it, I thought it was uh, it was kind of goofy looking, but they had a big no no. <laughs> so is that the is that the N54 or N55? N54. That's what I thought. Have you had any issues with the motor at all, or no? None whatsoever. I they're just so rare, it's just such a rare car. Like nobody modifies that car. That's why when like I first met you and you were coming to the shows with us, I was, I was just blown away because no one had a Z4 modified at the level that you did. Plus they probably don't make a lot of parts for that car either. No they don't, and that, that's the hard part. That's the real right. hard part. And then when you find something, they know that they have you. What's happening guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Today is a feature film on my friend Hector's beautiful Z4. If you guys have been following this channel or my Instagram for a while, you've probably seen this quite a few times. I've been to a lot of shows with Hector and this Z4 is incredibly unique. Not only are the Z4s just kind of rare in general, but this has got to be the most modified Z4, N54 powered Z4 that I've seen ever. I have actually never seen one more modified than this, and I think it's really tastefully done. If I were to modify a Z4, this is probably how I would go about doing it. It's just incredibly well done. And he's been modifying this particular one for four years. Four years, just constantly putting parts into it, constantly upgrading it, and he's at like every show here in Charlotte. This guy's just down for it. All right, guys, so this is my friend Hector. Hector with the Z4. Hector, thank you for letting me do this film on your car. We are longtime friends. When I first moved to Charlotte, he was one of the first people I met through the shop that we both go to, Dynamic Auto Tune. And Hector, I don't even know where to start because you have so much done to this car. It's probably one of the most, if not the most, modified car that I've had on the channel up there with Matt's M2. There's a, there's a lot done to this car and not only is there a lot done to it, but it's tastefully modded. We're gonna kind of give you guys a list of everything that he's done to it and kind of show you what it looks like. But let's start off a little bit talking about just, just the car in general. It is obviously a BMW Z4. What, what year is the car and like what engine does it have and all that? Sure, uh, it's a BMW Z4 2011. Mm -hmm. It's a 35i. It has the uh, N54 engine. Okay. And stock, it runs at around 305 horsepower. Okay. And with the tune that I have right now, I have an AutoWorks version two. Oh, stage so two. is that Active AutoWorks? Active oh, AutoWorks. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, it gives it a little pep. Oh yeah, for sure. In this light of a, I, I have to imagine it's probably pretty light, yes. being that it's such a small car. I bought her four years ago. Okay. So the the work that I've done, it's over the course of four years, mm -hmm. doing a lot of research, learning about the, how to maintain the paint because this car is very common in Japan. Yeah, you were and, saying that. And Taiwan and yeah. Asia. But so. you never see them here. No. Which is like, it's the, that's rare. why it's such a cool, it's such a unique build. I never see the Z4s, like I personally have, I've only seen a couple and to see it modified to this extent is just like, it's like seeing a unicorn, man. It's just so, it's so unique. I love it. So let's talk a little bit about the exterior of the car. Obviously you have like a little bit of carbon fiber done to it. Um, I see a front lip, I see side skirt extensions, I see like hood vents, I see carbon in the headlights, I see pretty much everything that you could have done carbon on this car is in fact carbon. Yeah, a lot of carbon, like you said earlier, trying to make it uh, tasteful. Yeah, we yeah. We don't want to overdo it. Carbon lip, carbon diffuser, the exhaust has uh, tips mm -hmm. that are M tips also with carbon. What I really, really like about the back end of this car is the spoiler. You don't see like the, le the level changes mm -hmm. in a spoiler 
like the Z4 rear end because it supports that that crazy design where it like goes up and down and just has all these aggressive lines. Yeah. It's really cool. It's super unique. I would I would think that most people would just go for like a simple one. They kind of mm -hmm. go mine, you know. Mm -hmm. But this one really really works with with that back end. As a matter of fact, uh, I was going to go with a simple one, but um, I came across this one and I saw a car with it. Because when you see it on picture, yeah. it really doesn't, you, you really want to picture it on the car. Yeah, it so, never does it justice. Yes, so, so I was lucky enough to see it on the car, so I automatically <laughs> ordered it. Yeah, you made a good choice. It so, looks really, really good. So does the does the roof actually come off? Yes, it's a, it's <laughs> so a convertible. Cool. It is, in fact, like a hard top convertible. Yes, it is. So did it come with a soft top and then you bought a hard no, top? No, the E89, they started building this model in 2009, all the way through 2016 and uh, all of them came with the hard top. And this is an 11, right? This is a 2011, yes. 2011. The brother of this one, the E86, mm -hmm. came with the soft top. So tell me a little bit about the hood setup because you have carbon vents in the hood, but I have to assume that you cut into that hood. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like going wide body, like you make that commitment and when you start cutting into that metal, there's no going back. But I actually, I think it looks really good on this hood, especially with the black line you have going down the front. It just supports, it supports the aggression overall really, really well. And then the headlights. Headlights are OSS design. Good guy. They're located down in Miami. He did a, a really fantastic job. I was looking for something clean. I was looking for the carbon fiber mm -hmm. eyelid with the uh, blue accents to go with with the caliper and the yeah because that's kind of your theme you have like mm -hmm. the gray black and blue which like ties really really well with like the m badge mm -hmm. and and all the carbon it just like it works and obviously there's an m badge in the headlights too yes so obviously you, yeah the full front end has basically been redone the back there isn't really anything that you haven't touched on this car how much further do you see yourself going with this build the next thing is Rollo face who is the sponsor that i have for my big brand they are making me the brakes for the back for the rear okay they come in this Thursday as soon as they come in I'm gonna go to dynamic to Dude, have the brakes installed. the brakes just change it the brakes just make the wheels and like the side profile of this car I think the big brake kits complete every build absolutely it's absolutely. it's almost the last thing that anyone ever does on a build mm -hmm. but it just it's just like the icing on the cake man absolutely and they're not cheap though. So it's, no, a, it's a big not. investment anytime you go to big break, but it's a commitment and you want to be able to select the right color, the right mm -hmm. fit, and, and go with the right company. Speaking of fit, fitment, your wheels. What what are you running with the wheel and tire setup? What size? Because they are super flush and the sizing looks perfect for this, the overall size of this vehicle. Yeah. Well, I didn't do anything crazy with the wheels. I kept it stock size because when the car came in, they came in at with 19 inch wheels oh, okay. from the factory. So I wanted to keep it stock. I didn't want to do any type of modification. So I have Vorsteiners. They're 19, eight and a half in the front and uh, nine and a half in the back and the rear. Oh, okay, cool. That's actually really similar to what I had on the F30. Yes. Same, same mm -hmm. setup. The Vorsteiners are Really nice wheels overall, like super expensive. <laughs> very, very expensive wheels, very, very good setup. This this car is incredible, man. You've done a really, really good job with it. I'm gonna assume this obviously isn't your only car because no. this, this is a very weekend <laughs> show car. Yes, I have a beat up Mazda that I use for my daily. Nice, <laughs> you gotta have a beat up. I'm thinking about getting a beater because now all my cars turn into show cars. And yeah, you guys get it. Tell me a little bit about the interior. You obviously have a little more carbon fiber in there and I see some more of that blue trim showing up. The interior, I ordered it from a company, NBD. They are located in Taiwan. So is it like the whole kit kind of comes the in with kit. it? Okay, yes. got it. Like the entire dashboard is one piece. Oh, wow. And then I have the side trims for the uh, for the doors, okay. trim in the bottom. I ordered all of them from them because nobody else makes it. These, these companies that know that he's trying to modify this like rare car, the parts are more expensive because not a lot of people are making them. It's not like building an E90 M3 where there's so many people building that car when you have a Z4 that's this rare. Air. It's kind of like they know they have you and they can just like price it up a little bit. For sure. Make you pay a little more. Absolutely. But it's worth it. But you if it. you want it, yeah. Exactly. The steering wheel is what I call a Frankenstein steering wheel. The wheel itself was made uh, by a company Vivid Racing. And then the paddle shifters came from California. And the uh, trim in the middle, uh, they came from Taiwan. Lots of moving so parts. So lots of moving parts. I wanted to keep it the OEM in carbon fiber. But the good part about that is no one's going to really be able to replicate what you've done. Correct. Because you're taking it from all of these different places. You didn't just buy a package from one place. You Correct. know what I mean? Yep. 
That's correct. Why don't you tell me a little bit about what you have done to the motor? I did a Arma carbon fiber intake fuse box. Uh, also ordered it from Taiwan from that same company. Okay. That's the cover. The, the cover. Carbon fiber cover. Yep, yeah. the carbon fiber where the cylinder cover sits. Yeah. It's uh, racing uh, dynamics. It's just decked out in carbon and fiber. And it's decked out in carbon fiber. <laughs> that's correct. Uh, that's for cosmetic purposes. And then of course the uh, tune that I gave it for the Active Auto Works. Okay. Wait, this is definitely more of like a show car. Correct. Then you're not out here street racing every night taking pink slips. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, no yeah. absolutely. The suspension that I'm running is uh, KW uh, Variant 1. It's stiff, it doesn't rub. It looks really nice. I really, I really enjoy the ride now. I feel more comfortable. For sure, uh, for sure. Before I had just the H and R springs, and uh, that was doing a lot of rubbing. So the KW is really stiff and everything up. All right, you guys, Hector and I are gonna go for a little cruise. I'm gonna bring you along with me. Let's hop over to GoPro footage in one, two. Cool, this is, I think this is the smallest car I've ever been in. <laughs> I, I, it might be, this might be the smallest car. Yeah, the, uh, the attention to detail on like the dash and everything is actually really impressive. This car stock probably has, how much did you say? Like, it's about 305. About 305 stock. Exactly. You know? It's so small. It feels like a little go-kart. <laughs> I would love to have one of these for daily driving. That's fine. Like just a stock, super stock one. It's a fun little car. There's a lot of things about this that remind me about my M2. Like the sizing and like how like capable it is. It's I a, like it. It's a lot of fun. driving with uh, paddles ever? Once in a while. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Just to test it out. Such a sick car. Yeah. Dude, there's so much carbon and so much blue in here. <laughs> it's like so unique. I love it. The Alcantara. All of that is custom. It's just crazy to me. This car is so fun. <laughs> I really want to get one. You know, like a bigger car, you don't really feel like you're going that fast. You feel like you're going really fast in this car. Even when you're probably not. Poor Travis has been sitting here by himself. Where'd he go? He's probably on the roof. He is on the roof. He's on the top of the parking deck. Pull into the same spot so we can get a photo of you. That sneaky little bastard. Look at him. Look at him. I should send the drone up there. We should, right? Look at him, little guy right there. All right, you guys, so that is Hector Z4. It's gonna wrap up today's video. Hector, thank you so much for being on the thank channel. I appreciate, appreciate you, it. man. Such an interesting and unique build. If you guys wanna follow Hector's build on his Instagram handle, I'm gonna put it right here, as well as linked down in the description. But that is effectively going to wrap up this feature film. Please make sure you guys subscribe, comment down below, like this video, hit that bell notification, and just like that, this video is over, and we're out. Peace.